Hey there. Today I'm going to be talking your ears off about Fortnite. I know what you're thinking. Boo. Fortnite sucks. It's for little babies. Never talk about Fortnite again or I'm unsubscribing from your channel. Well, I'm not here to give Fortnite a gold star or an Oscar award for best video game or anything like that. I'm here to talk you down, even though my stats clearly show that I'm not qualified to do so. Let's go. Normally I'd say I'm a pretty patient person, but when I'm playing video games, I want to get right into them. I want to wait as little as possible. If I must wait, then I don't want that time to be used to shove a product down my throat. And that's exactly where Fortnite went wrong. They chose to make it so that not only do you have to sit through a loading screen to get to the screen where you select Battle Royale or Save the World, that's the one that nobody cares about, but you also have to spam the escape button to skip an unnecessary intro sequence to promote the battle pass, which then leads to an equally unnecessary pan-in animation that leads to some room that shows you all the rewards that also has a button that lets you buy the battle pass. And then if you click escape out of that, it leads you to the tab that is called, you guessed it, battle pass. Before it was just a nice and simple loading screen, no unnecessary stuff like pan-ins and pan-outs, no intro sequence to skip, and you would go right to the tab where you could play the game. Wanting to make money is understandable, but that's an obnoxious way to do it in my opinion. And if you wanted to see what you still had to do for challenges, it was very easy to just go to the challenges tab. I'm trying to frag out, not hit chairs for half an hour. This is more a problem with Battle Royale games in general than Fortnite specifically. So I'm sure a lot of people can relate to it. So imagine this. You hop into a game of Fortnite, and you decide to land Salty Springs. And then you die, because the only gun you could find was a Beretta M9. So you say, okay, that might be a little too aggressive. So you choose to land at a couple of houses near craggy cliffs. You end up with some so-called carpets, a Spaz-12, a scar -L, and a Barrett 50 caliber, all well and good, right? Well, you end up running around to catch up with that little white circle the whole game and dying to someone who built the worst wooden house I've ever seen. Goodness, I think Green is shaking in his boots right now. I've got no issue with getting destroyed by someone who's legitimately better at the game than me, but why are you gonna make me run around for 20 minutes doing nothing but punching trees before any of that happens? I could go for a walk or write part of the script for this video in that time. At the same time though, it feels cheap to die because somehow your house didn't give you a gun. There is a way to counter this though, because apparently Pleasant Park exists. People land there, but you're less likely to die off spawn. And you can pick up at least a few kills if you know what you're doing, unlike me. This is more of a criticism of what Epic Games has done with Fortnite in the past, which really drives me up a wall. Remember the Excalibur sword? The flames from World War I that were stupidly overpowered for some reason? And that mech that even a two-year-old could get kills with? Yeah, I loved that. It definitely wasn't something they did not only to appeal to casual players of the game, but also to intentionally cause controversy within the community. It makes sense from a business perspective for Epic, but it really just follows that mindset of no press is bad press. Nowadays though, I think Epic has realized that controversy isn't always a good thing. So they decide now they're going to take a step in the right direction and actually make sure their players aren't angry at them all the time for putting stuff in the game by not even telling anyone what they put in the game. You heard that right. Epic Games doesn't even publish patch notes for Fortnite anymore. Every time you update the game, all you know is that the game got an update. And if you go to their website, it won't tell you anything about what they added beforehand. Even though it stops people from getting angry at Epic about a change they think is terrible before they've even launched the game, it's still ridiculous. Because how else am I supposed to know that they changed the way the spread works on a shotgun or that they removed the basic AR from the game? Oh yeah, by playing the game and looking for it. Announcing some of the more obvious stuff when you launch, such as a new weapon, is okay. But what about subtle yet important changes in the mechanics? Like, seriously. Why remove the one shred of developer transparency that you have? Back when Epic did publish patch notes and stuff on their blog, they made a post in response to the mechs being added in season... X, was it? I think it was 10, but whatever. Whatever season it was, 
They said that the mechs were added to help casual players get their first win and feel good about themselves. Just like basically everything that's ever been added since Season 5. That makes sense from a money perspective, because more noobs being happy from winning equals more of them buying skins, which means more money for Epic. However, that also means more professional players are upset at them. I might be a filthy casual myself, but I'd rather get a win from playing thousands upon thousands of games and getting better each time than getting one cheap victory because I left clicked on someone with an item. The best current example I have is the minigun, which can easily be used to get into people's boxes. You just hold down left click and spray right in there. Basically, Epic doesn't believe in the idea of getting better at a game. I get teaching people how to play, but just giving them a win is not going to do it. Why not have a tutorial for new players like the mobile version has? Even Call of Duty had a tutorial. And I've never even played a single Call of Duty other than Warzone, which suffers from the same slow pace problem, only to a greater degree. But that's for another video. Point is, Epic adds OP stuff for money. And I don't like it. Just by watching this video, you're gonna think I'm just complaining about something really small that can easily just be ignored. And to some extent, that is true. But at the end of the day, this video contains mostly my opinion and is satirical. That's a fancy word for trying to be funny and failing miserably. I still play Fortnite every now and then despite all these flaws because even though I don't find it to be the most enjoyable to play 24-7 by yourself, it can be fun if you're playing with friends or if you're playing anything but the base game. For example, Creative. There's a bunch of really fun maps on Creative, whether they're Zone Wars, which is based around the original game, or literally anything else. There's also a bunch of things I didn't cover, such as its community, which is more of a problem with mainstream games in general rather than Fortnite specifically. But those might be for another video, assuming you guys enjoy these blatant grade A under A ripoffs. Until then, I'm gonna go eat a Hot Pocket or something. Have a good rest of your quarantine. Oh, what? Controller player! That is a controller player! It is! I knew it!